Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial under data structures and algorithms and in this video tutorial we are going to be understanding what is an abstract data type in data structures so when you are studying data structures you will come across this term abstract data types quite often and it's a theoretical concept so we'll quickly understand this and the best way to understand this is by taking examples so in this video tutorial we'll understand what exactly is a abstract or a logical view and the implementation view of a data structure so that is the two ways in which we can study or view at data structures and we'll understand this by taking an example so with that being said let's get started so what exactly is a abstract data type now we have the definition of data structures which we've already seen in the previous video but i've just mentioned it so that you can reiterate it so in computer science a data structure is a way of data organization management and storage that enables efficient access and modification so this is something that we've cleared out in the previous video of this data structures playlist but the way we look at data structures can be categorized into two parts you know or two different types the one is where we actually have a logical or abstract or mathematical view or model wherein we just specify what all things the data structure is going to have now we know that data structure is a way of storing data right so when i'm saying way it means that there are some protocols there are some rules that are going to be followed right so all those protocols all those rules can be modeled as a proper view or a model and you can basically just write down all the specifications right so that comes under the logical or abstract or mathematical model or view now the second way or the second part you can say is the implementation part wherein you use all those rules and regulations and actually implement that using some programming language right so in the end obviously we're going to be implementing these data structures in practicals by using some programming language in our case we are going to be using c++ programming right so all these programming syntaxes will be based on this mathematical and logical or abstract model so now that you have a overview of the ways in which you can look at data structures let's try to define what a abstract data type is and let's take those examples into consideration okay so when we're talking about abstract data types adts that is the short form are entities that are definitions of data and operations but do not have implementation details so basically the abstract data type is the logical or mathematical or abstract view that we were talking about right so here we have the entities that are definitions of data and operations but do not have implementation which means that we know what we are going to be storing and we also know the operations that can be performed and the way in which the data is going to be stored depending upon what data structure we are going through but we haven't yet implemented it in any practical sense now the reason why we do not have any implementation in adt is because every different programming language has different implementations for example a particular data structure in c can be implemented using the concept of structures but that same data structure can be implemented by using the concept of objects and classes in java programming and so on and so forth you know so different programming languages have different implementation strategies to tackle different abstract data types so basically data structures are these abstract data types which has specifications about how the data is going to be stored and what are the operations that can be performed on these data types and these different entities but the implementation depends upon the programming language that we use okay so to get this thing more cleared out let's actually take a real world example so here's a real world example of a smartphone okay so if we were to look at this smartphone in a abstract or logical view what we are going to be doing is we are just going to be defining what all things does a smartphone have at a high level okay for example this smartphone will have 4 gb ram this smartphone is having a snapdragon 2.2 gigahertz processor so every smartphone has a ram has processor has a 5.5 inch lcd screen now the screen size obviously varies depending upon what smartphone we are using but this particular smartphone has dual cameras it has android operating system which is 8.0 version and what not you know and along with all these properties this smartphone also has some functionality also has some operations and behaviors right so this is what that operation stands for and this is the data right so information can be termed as the data of that particular entity so here we are looking at smartphone so this is all the information and data about that smartphone and the operations are you can use your smartphone to call you can use it to perform text you can send text you can click photos you can click videos and so on and so forth so these come under the behavior and the operations right so this is what a abstract or logical view of this smartphone looks like wherein you are just stating all the different properties and all the different operations and behaviors that that particular entity can do but when you look at the implementation view over here so when you are actually implementing this in terms of programming in terms of a actual code this is how the code would look like in a proper c++ programming language so you are creating a class so of course we have objects 
and classes in the C++ programming language. If it was C, then we could have used structures. So in that we have these different variables created for those respective properties, right? We have RAM size, processor name, we have screen size and their respective data types, obviously in string float. And then we also have some methods which correspond to these behaviors. So we have void call, void text and obviously the definition can be defined later on. But right now I just want to state or show you how the implementation view would look like. Now, if this was some other programming language, let's say it was Java or Python, obviously the syntax is going to be changing some keywords and some mechanism is also going to be changing, right? Which means that the implementation view can change. However, the abstract and logical view is independent of this implementation. So this is what this abstract data type actually means. Now coming to our data structures world, let's take an example in the data structures environment. Okay, so let's take the basic integer array. So we've seen an array data structure in the previous video also. So let's continue with that only so that we'll understand it in a better way. Now here's an example which has an integer array of size 4. Okay, so we have the index position starting from 0, 1, 2, 3. So array is a data structure wherein it is a collection of elements which are stored at contiguous memory locations. So you can see in the orange we have memory addresses which are just one besides other. So 1000, 1004, 1008 and 1012. So this is basically in bytes and each integer element in C++ takes up four bytes. So that's why four bytes and then we have 1004 and then 1008 and the addresses are allocated just right besides each other, which means that it is contiguous in nature and not continuous. Okay. We have index positions allocated and then the blue ones are the actual values. So this first position is storing value 10, this 20, 30 and 40. So this implementation, so this is basically what an array is. And all these index positions, value, memory address, all these things are implemented in programming languages differently by different programming language, right? So the abstract or logical view of this integer array can be stated as this data structure or this array store a set of elements of integer data type. So in this case, we are using integer array, right? So you can also say of a particular data type if you want to go more generic. Then we read elements by position that is index. So we have indexes to access different positions starting from zero. We can again modify elements by its index. So if we access one particular index, we can change the value at that index and we can also perform sorting. And obviously there would be many more things that can be done using this array data structure. Right now I've just given an example of how an abstract or logical view would look like. Now coming to the implementation side, this is how it would look like in C++ programming. So the syntax would be int ARR. I'm creating an array of size 5 in this case and not 4. I'm having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the actual element. So I'm also initializing the array. I'm saying C out ARR of 1, which means I want the value at position 2. Okay. So this is 0 index position. This is 1 index position. If I'm saying ARR of 1, so the output would be 2 over here. Now what I'm doing is I'm saying ARR of 2 equals to 10. So this is the third position or second index value. The value is 3 over here. But when I'm saying ARR of 2 equals to 10, the new value will be 10. So I'm modifying it by using the index, right? So this is what is specified over here. So this is basically the implementation view. So when we're talking about abstract data types, it is just entities which have a definition for how the data is going to be stored and what kind of data is going to be stored and what are the operations that are going to be operating on that particular data. So this was an example of array, right? So if you go ahead and check out other data structures, as we move ahead, we'll obviously see them. But just for example, we can talk about stack. So stack is a linear data structure, which works on last in first out, which means the last value being added into the stack will be popped out first. Or you can also say first in last out, which means the first value that goes in will be the last one to come out. So that would be written in this logical view. And then obviously the implementation is something that we have to type in in form of code, depending upon what kind of programming language we use. So that's why implementation always keeps on changing a little bit here and there. Obviously the operation that is the actual behavior is always going to be the same just that since every programming language has its unique properties also the implementation slightly changes okay so this was a little bit detail about what is abstract data types you don't really have to stress out on this topic it is not really a big thing it is just as i mentioned small entities that are having definitions of data and operation but do not have implementation that's about it this is one line that should be enough and as you can see we've also talked about the example so abstract data types are nothing but the specification that we provide without the implementation. Okay, so that's it for this video guys. I hope you have got an idea about what are abstract data types. You might come across this term quite often as you move ahead. 
So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. Do give it a like. Let me know in the comments how this video was. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.